Hey, what's up? My name is Leif Arneson. I'm the co-founder of TheVeganGym.com, and today I'm spilling the garbanzo beans on 10 essentials that no vegan should live without. Let's jump in. Double, double gun. That's my go-to. Nutritional yeast is basically vegan crack, basically kind of like a really cheesy flavor that you can add to different dishes. And it's just kind of this yellow powdery flaky stuff. That doesn't make it sound very good. <laughs> you can. <laughs> One thing that vegans literally cannot live without is vitamin B12. One tablespoon of this nutritional yeast has over 300% of your daily value. You can also supplement with an actual B12 supplement like this and just take it in a pill or capsule form as you can see here, I only have three pills left. Now, to be clear, this is not something that just vegans need to be concerned about. In fact, almost everybody needs to consider taking a B12 supplement. Vitamin B12 is actually made by bacteria. It's made by microbes. It is not made by animals. If you actually look at the dairy and meat industries, they actually supplement all of their livestock with vitamin B12, and that's actually a much lower quality form of B12 than you're gonna get in a supplement. So jokes on meat eaters. I actually don't use nutritional yeast that much. <laughs> I'm not really a cheesy person, so that's why I don't incorporate it in too many dishes, but I know I am in the minority there and most people love cheese, so this is definitely a product that you should consider trying out. So honestly, when I first went vegan, I had no idea what to eat. And I was trying to focus on building muscle in the gym and proving all my friends wrong when they said that I wasn't gonna be able to get big and strong as a vegan. And now I know that there are tons of different options. But when I was first looking into it, I discovered tofu. I remember going to the grocery store, getting a tofu package, bringing it home, cutting it open, and trying it just out of the package. I tried uh, even microwaving it after that because I thought it needed to be heated up. Anyways, don't do that. It's disgusting. There's so many different ways that you can make delicious tofu. In fact, we were pulling all these protein options together for this video, and I realized that we don't even have tofu in the fridge because I've eaten it all. So needless to say, I figured out how to cook tofu. It's really delicious. I typically marinate it and then put it in the air fryer. And there are also tons of different plant-based protein options. I'm really on a soy curl kick right now, so I actually have soy curls pretty much once a day. I generally don't do too much with kind of fake meats or mock plant-based meats. Generally, they have oil, some other ingredients that aren't necessarily that healthy. It's totally something that you can include in your diet, and I do from time to time, but it's not really necessary to have on a regular basis. It also tends to be a little more expensive. Lentils, super cheap, a great source of whole food plant protein. These are my current favorite vegan protein bars. They actually just came out on top in a recent vegan protein bar review that we did. We also have some protein protein powder. I generally use True Nutrition on, on a daily basis because you can customize it. It's also pretty inexpensive. Another really great source of protein that people don't know too much about is actually uh, powdered peanut butter. So powdered peanut butter is basically peanut butter uh, without the extra fats and carbs. What's really important is finding one or two or three, just kind of a handful of different vegan protein sources that you really enjoy, something that can help you to accomplish your fitness goals on a plant-based diet. I can't tell you the number of times that people have said to me, oh, what, you're vegan? One thing that I really love doing is disproving the myth that vegans can't be strong and athletic, and that's something that I've definitely proven kind of in my own life. I can't tell you the amount of comments that we get on our videos, whether it's on social media or on YouTube, with people who are just like, but meat though, or but bacon though, or any of those kind of comments, and every single time I read that, I just wanna be like, let's go hit a workout and let's see what you got, because I'm gonna kick your ass. All right, so if you've seen any of my other videos, you know I'm pretty much a nerd. 
And one thing that I did when I first went vegan is I just went right into peer reviewed scientific literature and I started reading a bunch of studies. The first book that I ever read uh, when I was going plant-based was The China Study by Dr. T. Colin Campbell. And I actually had the pleasure of interviewing him recently. That was a really cool kind of full circle experience for me. It's really important when you go vegan to understand at least the basic fundamental important points behind a plant-based diet. You need to understand things like how to get in all of your micronutrients, what foods you should be prioritizing, if you have any fitness goals or body recomposition goals, whether that's losing weight or building lean muscle, you need to understand how to build different vegan meals to accomplish those goals. We are actually working on a brand new plant-based course called The Plant Powered Body. You can check that out. It's actually totally free. And the reason that I decided to make this course is because I struggled a lot when it came to nutrition. When I was first going vegan, I didn't understand how to blend the health side of plant-based nutrition with the fitness side of plant-based nutrition. So that's something that I detail in this course. Uh, there are other options as well, such as joining our Vegan Superhero Academy, which is our one-on-one -on -one online coaching program. I'm really proud to say that's the most trusted vegan health and fitness coaching program in the world. So if you want a coach in your corner to guide you every single step of the way to help you thrive on a plant-based diet, that's an option as well. So whether it's books or courses or some kind of coaching program, just getting that uh, kind of fundamental vegan nutrition and fitness knowledge that you need to thrive as a vegan is really important. Up next, we got vegan apparel. And what is the point of being vegan if you don't tell everybody that you see that you're vegan? I wear lots of the vegan gym brand stuff. So we've got not bad for a vegan, which is pretty cool. I was lifting with a friend one day. This was like eight years ago. I had recently gone vegan and I benched more than him that day when we were hitting chest together. And he's like, hmm, not bad for a vegan. I was like, okay, I need to put that on a shirt. But anyways, just this really approachable uh, kind of method of vegan activism is something that really speaks to me. So I love wearing around shirts that say, not bad for a vegan or just anything that's vegan related. I love having conversations, whether it's in the gym, grocery store, anywhere about veganism. And that's a great way of doing that. We also have a vegan superhero shirt over here. Every single vegan is a superhero. You're literally saving the world. You're saving animals. You're saving your health. We kind of built uh, our whole coaching program, uh, the Vegan Superhero Academy, around the concept of being a vegan superhero, going out, crushing your goals, and showing the world what it means to be a vegan. So not only do we wanna wear apparel that tells everyone that we're vegan, we also wanna be sure to make our entire wardrobe vegan. So here are some dress shoes that I got from V, uh, what is it? Will's Vegan Shoes. I really like these boots and they are made from all different types of materials. I've seen so many, so many weird things where it's like, this is made of coconuts. This is made of pineapples. Over the years since I've been vegan, I've gotten so many comments from people who say, what does that mean you don't eat? Or what can't you do as a vegan? I don't feel that way about veganism. I feel like all I have done is discover new ways of cooking, new foods, new different kinds of apparel options, new different kinds of hygiene products. It's really a fun process to go through and swap out some items that you have bought in the past with some more ethical versions that are made uh, without uh, taking from animals. So at first I've got some I don't even think I've ever pronounced this before. Herbin, Herbin Cowboy Force. This is some really nice vegan deodorant and it uh, has a really nice foresty smell. I don't know, I think that's pine. I really like being out in the woods and since I live in Oklahoma now and there aren't any woods, I get a little taste of that with, uh, I don't actually eat it, but. So as for my toothpaste, I love using this Tom's of Maine. One really important note to make about this is that it's fluoride free. So fluoride is not something that I wanna be having in my toothpaste or water or consuming in any way. You can do your own research on that, but I've already done it and 
it's not really great for you. So another personal care item that I use, this is soap. So this is Dr. Bronner's peppermint soap. And uh, it actually, it's looking a little crusty right now because I keep it in my shower but I uh, should have probably washed it off a little bit before I brought it out here. This is just a really high quality soap that doesn't have any additives or any kind of chemicals and extra stuff in it that you don't want. In fact, they have the ingredients listed kind of front and center, which I really appreciate. And I really love the peppermint option. There are a bunch of different, uh, I was gonna say flavors, but I probably wouldn't call them flavors. <laughs> I also don't eat soap, <laughs> but there are a bunch of different, uh, <laughs> actually can't even think of that. What's the word? <laughs> uh, bunch of different scents. Scent. Okay, a bunch of different scents for soap that you can use as well. I, I swear I like looked through my whole cabinet and I was like, there are three personal care products that I use. So I don't know if that doesn't mean that I'm taking enough care of myself, but uh, those are the main three I use. One other note that I'd love to make about the deodorant is that it's aluminum free. So aluminum is another thing that I don't wanna be putting in my body and actually putting aluminum in under your armpits where your skin is really sensitive and lots of uh, chemicals can actually pass through your skin. That's just not something that I wanna do. So I stick with aluminum free deodorant across the board. One thing in my opinion that really doesn't get talked about enough is animal cruelty when it comes to testing products on animals. It's just, uh, it's a really messed up industry and it's not something that I wanna to contribute to. And that's why having vegan products across the board for personal care and everything else is so important to me. I think it's important to treat animals with the same compassion that we treat each other with. So this is my Vitamix blender and it's uh, honestly one of the things I spend the most time with <laughs> in my life. So I don't know if that's uh, depressing or not, but it's uh, a super awesome gadget to have in the kitchen. I make at least one smoothie a day, usually twice, sometimes even three smoothies a day. I reserve those for special occasions, but up next, we've got some pots and pans. These are all really high quality, non-stick pots and pans, which is really important for not needing to cook with oil. As you've probably seen in other videos, I'm really not a fan of using any kind of cooking oils. It just adds a ton of calories and yeah, it adds a little bit of flavor, but it's not worth it in terms of the number of calories. So having a super high quality pan is really important and also, I only ever use non-metal uh, utensils when I'm cooking in these. That's also really important. I hate when pans and pots get uh, scraped and scratched. I have literally brought a pot to Airbnbs because I know that it's just gonna be scratched as shit and I'm just gonna be eating chemicals for dinner. And that's not what I wanna do. So I literally sometimes pack these pots and pans when I travel. Up next, this is an air fryer, and this is right up there with my Vitamix. Um, don't worry, you're still number one. Perfect for tofu, perfect for soy curls, and a bunch of other yummy vegan foods. Um, rice cooker is absolutely crucial for getting the perfect rice every single time. And uh, of course you could do it on a pot, but this is easier and it's perfect every time. All right, we got some yummy vegan snacks, starting with some lemon protein bars. These are my current favorite vegan protein bar. I am not endorsed by them in any way, but I just think their products are really good. I think I might start snacking on one. Does anyone else want a protein bar? Here, what? one for everyone. All right, you can have one too. All right, so honestly, most of this stuff I wouldn't have, but all of these are options for on the go. A lot of this stuff is more processed and less healthy than I generally like to stick with. But when you're traveling, you do have some constraints. Let's uh, let's first talk about like an airport or a gas station, something like that. I'm generally looking for pretzels. I really love pretzels. They're also relatively healthy. They tend to uh, not have too many ingredients. They also, uh, you can find ones that don't have oil. But some other things that I'll do uh, would be to grab some dried roasted edamame. Here's another version of that. 
And actually here are some lentils. These uh, are pretty good options for having some higher protein. There's probably no fruit that I love more than dried mango. I used to buy dried mango by like the 40 pound case <laughs> and I'd go through in like a month. And that's a lot of calories. So I stopped ordering that. As far as when I am traveling, I'm packing protein powder. That's kind of one of the main things that I'm doing. Just because it's so easy to travel with protein powder and it's so versatile, you can basically put it in any dish and uh, you could even just have it in a shake. I really love actually bringing oatmeal packets. You can actually even go up to Starbucks or some coffee place or really anywhere and just ask for some hot water and actually make some oatmeal. The one trick with getting food through TSA Actually, there are lots of tricks. I'm like a, a, a food smuggler through TSA. One, they don't like anything liquid or anything that's like gooey. So making oatmeal ahead of time and bringing that through is usually a no-go. I've gotten it through a few times, but most of the time they catch me. One way that you can get around that is actually making baked oatmeal. That's a really great hack. You're just making oatmeal the way you would, and then you put it in uh, the oven and actually just bake it for whatever, 40 minutes, an hour, something like that. Uh, actually, last time I, I went through, they uh, did stop me and they looked at it and they're like, what is this? And then I explained and they're like, oh, actually it looks pretty good. So I sold a uh, TSA agent on eating more oatmeal. One other item that lots of vegans like to travel with are nuts. They are higher in calories. So I honestly, I generally do not consume lots of nuts and seeds in my diet. I eat a daily Brazil nut for selenium. I also have flax seeds, so I would throw that in the same category. But as far as like nuts and seeds that I would travel with and eat on the go, almonds are great. Uh, but again, just keep portion size in mind. I really love cashews. You can have walnuts, pistachios. And I guess I should definitely mention hip peas. I love them a lot. They're basically just chickpea. Puffs. The macronutrient profile isn't amazing, but they have some protein in them because they're made from chickpeas and they're relatively healthy. So it's a, it's a decent snack to have on the go. Now, one really important part of being vegan is showing everyone what veganism is really all about. And that means getting jacked. So I'm gonna run through some of my favorite vegan workout gear. I've got two items here, but there are so many different kinds of gear that you can be using. I've got my trusty Adidas Powerlift 3s. These are some awesome vegan lifting shoes. There are so many different types of workout shoes, fitness shoes, running shoes, like there are all different types of shoes. So you wanna get something kind of special to what you're doing. I. I kind of primarily got them for squatting, but I really wear them for everything in the gym. Also, I've got a weightlifting belt here. This is from Strength Shop, and this is a totally vegan lifting belt. There's so many different types of lifting belts as well. This one is a kind of a latch system that uh, you would just put around your waist. Heck, I can even show you right now. You just put it around your waist. You're bulking a little bit, a little tighter than usual. Yeah, if you're lifting anything heavy, that's a, a good thing to have in your gym bag. I also have uh, some wrist wraps as well. I'm a real big believer in focusing on the actual muscle group that we're trying to train. If I'm deadlifting, um, I don't really like using mixed grip because I feel like that creates some muscular imbalances. It also puts you at a slightly higher risk of injury. So instead, I'll use some lifting straps, put that over the bar, and then I can do overhand grip up to uh, a lot of weight. So one great thing to have in your vegan kitchen is a bunch of awesome vegan cookbooks. This is the Plant You Cookbook. This uh, came out recently. Uh, lots of really delicious recipes in there. We've got the Fiber Fueled Cookbook. So if your goal is great gut health, then this is the way to go. We've got a low FODMAP uh, recipe book as well. So you can check that out if you have uh, kind of dietary concerns related to that. And we also have plant-based on a budget, quick and easy. 
So there are hundreds of different vegan cookbooks that you can check out. There are also some really great sites. Literally type in whatever kind of food you want. You can say, hey, vegan stir fry or vegan pizza recipe and learn how to create a few go-to recipes. That's something that I have done over the past few years and that served me really well. One thing that I love using is the Happy Cow app. So. This is uh, an app that all vegans should have. And what you can do is just look around your location. I guess you can see where I live. You can just look around your location and uh, check out different restaurants. You can look for vegan only restaurants or vegetarian restaurants or vegan options. And it's just really great to have on the go, especially when you're going to a new place. There are tons of really great uh, vegan restaurants that are always popping up. So if that's something you wanna do, you can go for it. So as a vegan, it's really important to have a strong support system like a bunch of vegan friends. So I remember when I first went vegan, I did not know anybody else who was vegan. When Anders actually got out of the military and he came back to live with me, we had our fridge just segmented down the line. He had just like all of his meat products and I had just a bunch of vegan products. For some people, that's that's a huge obstacle. It's a real struggle to not know other people who are following a similar lifestyle or not having people really understand or even getting some snide comments from family and friends. And that can be really hard, but it's also a great opportunity to find other like-minded people. Finding other vegans in Facebook groups, going to meetups, there are so many different opportunities for veg fest or other vegan events that you can attend. Literally the first like vegan friend I ever had, first it was probably my sister who I turned vegan. <laughs> I made my first vegan friend. And then I did the same thing with my brother. So then I had two friends. <laughs> and then basically I just kept doing that until I built a community around myself, which is now the vegan gym. <laughs> I built my vegan friends, built a vegan bubble around me, and that's, uh, that's a good approach. When we were coming up with these video notes, we were going to throw in a number 11 as just kind of a joke and say that vegans need patience, but that's also not really a joke because it's really true. It's probably going to take your family and friends some time to understand why you're vegan, what you eat, what veganism even means. If they truly care about you, if they love you, then they're going to, uh, at the very least, uh, be accepting of the lifestyle that you choose to live. And hopefully, maybe you can open their eyes as well and encourage them to make healthier uh, and more compassionate choices within their own lives too. Understand that you were probably not vegan uh, at some point before in your life. And I try to always use that as a point to keep me grounded. Thinking through how you would want someone, a, a vegan to have treated you prior to going vegan is a really great way to approach conversations now that you are vegan. So if you're a vegan who sometimes struggles to live in a non-vegan world, remember that you are making a difference and you should be proud of your lifestyle. All right, that's gonna be a wrap. Thank you so much for watching. I'd also love to hear in the comments if I missed any vegan essentials that you think are really important. So please leave a comment and let me know and I'll catch you in the next video.